All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about titanium, and I'm also going to do some titanium aqueous chemistry, which I did not do in the last video. Titanium is extremely useful. Um, as titanium dioxide, its most common compound and its primary ore, uh, titanium is found everywhere. Look up at a wall. Most likely, you're looking at titanium at some titanium dioxide because it is the primary pigment in white paint. I bet that you've probably put some titanium dioxide in your mouth because it's found in gum. And I bet you rubbed it on your skin because it's found in sunscreen. As you can see, titanium dioxide is found everywhere. Titanium metal is somewhat more elusive and uh, quite, quite uh, highly sought after because partly because it's very glamorous in that it is used in fighter aircraft and partly because it's quite expensive and actually hard to get. Now let me explain why titanium metal is hard to get when its compounds are quite what well, titanium dioxide is very common. The reason it's hard to get is first because it's hard to separate it from the, from the oxygen because it's very strongly bonded to it. Once you get the metal, however, it's relatively unreactive. But to mold it into any useful shape, you first need to melt it, and it actually, titanium metal actually burns before it melts, making it very hard to have useful titanium things, useful things made out of titanium. So it's, titanium metal is pretty expensive, but it is very useful because it's extremely strong, much about as strong as steel, and very, very light, about as light as aluminum, actually lighter than aluminum. So because of this, um, it is used in applications where you really want something strong and light, and you don't care too much about cost, such as high-performance fighter aircraft. Um, also, titanium is sometimes used in implants in the body because it's strong and not very reactive, and, and light, all, all of which make it good things for stuff like, um, you know, replacement joints. Um, so titanium is also uh, not magnetic and strong and light, which make it useful in experiments where you're going to be working with a strong magnetic field. All right, so now I'm going to show you some of the beautiful aqueous chemistry of titanium um, and, some, and two of titanium's most easily accessible oxidation states. The first step in doing titanium aqueous chemistry is to get the titanium into solution. So what we do is we put titanium in hydrochloric acid, which will oxidize it to the plus three oxidation state and release hydrogen gas. But it does this extremely slowly at room temperature, so I'm going to warm up the acid to give it a, a head start. You will see a color change because um, Titanium plus three is uh, in solution is blue. All right, so I'm going to now uh, speed up the following reaction. In real life, it takes about uh, 15 or 20 minutes to get from here all the way till the full reaction is over. All right, a lot of speeding up and a couple cuts later, I've reacted um, a good amount of the titanium and boiled down the solution until it's really concentrated. There you can see the really nice purplish blue color of titanium in the plus three oxidation state. Now I'll show you my second go and we'll try to get it to the plus four oxidation state. All right, now that we have this really nice blue titanium three plus solution, I am going to oxidize it to titanium 4 plus using normal drugstore hydrogen peroxide. You see it forms a really nice red color. And this red color is titanium in the 4 plus oxidation state. However, it is a complex with the hydrogen peroxide. What happens is in solution you actually have polyatomic um, ions that include hydroxide. So because I want you to see free floating titanium 4 plus ions, I am going to um, re I'm going to reduce the the hydrogen peroxide using sulfur dioxide 
um, so that it no longer can form the coordination complex. The way I'm making the sulfur dioxide is by reacting sulfuric acid, which I added earlier, with sodium chlorate, which is what you're seeing me adding now. Um, the sulfur dioxide is mostly what's bubbling out, um, and it's, it's taking those extra oxygens from the peroxide with it. Eventually, the solution turns a nice yellow, but I still have some sulfuric acid in there and some sodium chlorate in there. So I'm going to see, um, you can see the sodium chlorate at the bottom. I'm going to see if uh, it can uh, break up the complex of a whole lot more. And you can see a really nice effect there. So it looks like the sulfur dioxide has some real reducing power because it can reduce all this. And the smell of sulfur dioxide is really strong right now, so I'm getting out of the way and blowing it all out. Here's a solution. So of... what I'm now going to try to do is to reduce the titanium plus four to titanium metal using a more active metal, magnesium. The magnesium will uh, oxidize itself to plus two and reduce the titanium to the titanium plus four to titanium metal. So I'm going to have a solution of magnesium two plus and chloride, and hopefully some titanium metal will come out of the solution. Here's my product. You see some gray, which is titanium metal, and a little bit of white, which is magnesium chloride that came out of solution.